What's up, metalheads? Grab that guitar and let's hit the stage because in this tutorial, we're going to be making metal materials. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to be making some metal materials in Blender. And a quick shout out, thank you for all the subscriptions to my channel. I think I have like 2,200 now. The last video I made, I had 2,000. So you guys are flying off the charts. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. And another quick shout out to my 2,000th subscriber, Kadabra Carl. He is an industrial designer that I met over on Instagram. Uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you probably should. That's where I'm at. Um, and I'm trying to be here more too, obviously. More tutorials coming soon, I promise. So what I'm doing right here now is just setting up my um, interface. If I could pay attention, I'm trying to do two things at once. So that you guys can see kind of how I set that up. A lot of times you guys have questions about that. So um, there it is, I just did it. When I'm working with materials, I want to have basically a preview over here pressing shift Z to go into that view. And I want to have a large area to actually work on the nodes. So very quickly, I'll also mention, I, I do have an HDRI image set up. Anytime you're working with a glossy material, such as metal, uh, it's a good idea to have an HDRI just to get some more realistic reflections, make your lighting a little more exciting. Yeah, you heard that right. That was a good one. And I also have a airy lamp down here for some extra lighting from the bottom exciting lighting yeah, it's my new favorite rhyme so let's go ahead and get started with the material i don't want to see this um hdri in the background so i'm going to turn it off uh, and if you want to know how to set up an hdri i have a tutorial on my channel i'll leave a link in the description um okay so we have the Nymph Preparing for Bath selected here. This is a model I got from 3dscans.com. They have some really nice 3D scans over there. I'll also leave a link for that. Check them out. Cool stuff. Great um, models for testing materials just like this. So now let's create this material. I'm going to press New right here. You could also press it down here, but I'm going to press it right here because that's where I like to press it. You can press it wherever you want. So now we have a basic material set up here. Very plain. Um, doesn't have anywhere near the amount of stuff we need. So where is that stuff? It's in the principal shader. So I'm gonna, with this selected, I'm gonna shift S to switch the shader to a principal shader. Now in order to do that, you'll need to have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled to do that shift S thing. I think it's gonna be coming by default with some newer versions of Blender, but if you don't have it installed, then I highly recommend you do that. It's, it's already in there, you just need to turn it on. So. There it is. Um, yeah, you're gonna need that. We're gonna be using it a bunch more. Do it now. Promise Promise me you'll do it now. So we have our material set up here. It's looking pretty plain now, but we want it to be metal. So what on earth are we gonna do? Oh, metallic slider, how convenient. We're gonna turn that all the way up to one and now it's metal. But you may be saying, Derek, uh, it's kind of rough. I want my metal to be less rough. I want it to be shiny. What are we gonna do? Ah, well. There's a roughness slider. We're going to turn the roughness slider down, and now it's shiny, less rough, you might say. If we turn it up, it does the opposite. And uh, so you can see here values closer to zero are less rough, shiny. Values closer to one are more rough, not shiny. So I'm going to leave it at something like a you know, 0.15. You usually don't want to turn it all the way down to zero. That's just not very realistic. But please, I encourage you. Play as much as you want. Don't do exactly what I'm doing. If I catch anyone doing exactly what I'm doing, I'm going to be so mad. You got to do your own stuff with Blender. There's so many options. Look at all these sliders. You could just like, even if you just change the sheen tint, we're not going to talk about the sheen tint. Don't worry about what that does. So we have our shader set up pretty much here. Um, you know, you can make it a little bit darker, do whatever you want. Again, play with these values do what you want. We're going to name this Polished, and that is going to be the conclusion of this whole tutorial. Just kidding. That's the first material. We're going to be making three today. That's Polished. Always a good idea to name your materials. And what you will see now before you is a beautiful 1080p render of this material. So you can see what it looks like up close and personal. Feel free to leave me the like and pop into pulse, full screen. Pull screen. Pop into full screen to appreciate it in all its full screen glory whatever. 
So yeah, we've got the first material done. Let's move on to the next one, which is going to be brushed aluminum or you know, whatever material it's brushed. So I'm going to press this little plus sign over here, and that's going to add a new material. And I'm going to name this material brushed because, yeah, that's what we're going to be making next. So brushed metal, um, you probably already know what I'm talking about, but basically the way they make it, which is important to kind of recreating it in 3D, is they take a you know stiff brush basically and swipe it across the metal and that kind of creates these scratches which digs into the material hint hint bump mapping and um, reveals kind of a shinier metal beneath hint hint roughness so to get that texture we're going to have to add a texture so i'm pressing shift a texture and i'm going to add a noise texture which is my favorite now, again, with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, I can shift Control left click to preview that node, that noise texture. So it's got this cotton candy color now, but I actually want that to be black and white because when we're working with roughness and with bumpness, we it's just easier to work with black and white because you know black is zero, white is one. It just it, it just makes more sense. It's easier to work with. So I'm pressing Shift A and I'm going to convert those colors to a black and white by adding a converter color ramp. And when we pull these in, you can see what we're able to do here. We're kind of able to increase the contrast and change things around, just in general, give ourselves a little bit more control. But um, this texture is kind of stretched a funny way, so I'm um, using the Node Wrangler add-on again. I'm gonna left click on this noise texture and press Control T, and that's gonna add some mapping nodes where we can see how this texture is actually being mapped to our object. And right now it's being mapped with generated coordinates. But for when I'm working with procedural textures, which is what we're doing now, um, I just like to use this object coordinates. And that does a pretty good job of just um, kind of nicely spreading that texture around the object. So if you're working with a more advanced model, you might want to be using this UV. But um, you'll see that's not actually doing anything for me because this model is not UV unwrapped. So we're just going to leave that at object. And now what we're going to use this texture for, um, basically we want to create those brush marks, those kind of straight long streaks. So the way we're going to do that is by basically squashing this texture. So I think you could really do this with any of them. But yeah, I'm going to squash it on the, um, I'm going to squash it on the Y axis. So when I just drag up on this, you can see it's going to start squashing that texture. So I'm going to Press Control S to save here. Sometimes this can get kind of crashy. And what it's doing is just kind of, it's squishing it, so it, it's making it look like it's got these stretches. And when you squish it this much, you really don't need to mess too much with the scale. We could probably actually bring that back a little bit if we wanted to. And maybe we'll squash a little more. Again, just play with these values, whatever you want. Um, this does create some problems for us in kind of flat areas like up here. It's kind of losing the effect and down here. But um, depending on what you're doing, you know, this will probably be fine. If you need to rotate it, then you might need to get into um, doing some UV mapping, but we're not going to talk about that today. So what we have here now is this basically map we've created that's got black areas and white areas, and we want to use that to control the roughness. So again, black corresponds to a value 0, white to 1. So when we plug this in here, that's actually going to be basically telling this kind of roughness input that instead of just using a single value, um, this map is going to tell it, you know, where's rough and where's not. So when we put that all together, we can see we've already got a pretty good effect going on here. Um, and now I don't want, um, you can see, like as I mentioned, you know, with the roughness value of zero, which corresponds to black, it's totally shiny. So when this is in here, these black areas are totally shiny, and I don't actually want any part of my model to be completely shiny. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to move this value up a little bit. And then similarly, I don't want any area areas totally rough, so I'm going to bring this white value down a little bit. And now there's just not quite as much um, contrast there. So something like that I think is looking pretty good. And now there's just one other part of this texture that we're going to create now, which like I mentioned, when um, when material is brushed in real life, it's you know it actually kind of digs into the surface a little bit. So we're going to add a very simple bump map. So I'm going to add a vector bump. Drop that right about there because I'm going to plug it into the normal input. And with a bump map here, I want to, you know, I want to influence the height. So I'm going to 
use the same noise texture because kind of where it's scratchy and shiny, I also want there to be a bump. So I'm going to save again and um, I'm going to pull this into the height. And now you can see it's like really crazy bumpy. So again, using the node wrangle add on, if I shift control left click on that bump, we can see um, the effect that that's having. So um, when we when we look at it there, it's just a little bit too strong. So we're going to turn down the strength and just get it to something um, kind of subtle. You know, we don't want this to be too crazy. Um, and I think that looks pretty good like that, just kind of a lower value. Maybe we'll leave it a nice even 0.3. So now when this is all together, you can see we have a nice kind of bump effect. You can see this is what it looks like without that. When we add it in, we're getting that bump effect. And the roughness is, you know, instead of just having this singular value, we're getting this nice variation when the roughness is plugged in. So that's looking really good. And um, I think that does it for our rough or sorry, our brushed material. So now in beautiful full screen again, you can see a preview of the brush material. Yes, it's absolutely gorgeous. Appreciate it in all its glory. So I'll save again. And now I wanna move on to the next material, which is gonna be um, kind of like a mix between the two. We're gonna, you know, it's gonna have some more details, a little more exciting, but what we do with this brushed is pretty particular. So if you're if you're doing that, you know, this squash isn't something we'd be using. So what I want to do is create a new material from this one. And I'm going to just do that by hitting this little plus sign. That will create a duplicate, which is named brushed 001, which will change to um, rough or something. Rough, roughish. It's not going to be totally rough. It's going to be like kind of shiny. So yeah, like I said, we don't we don't need this squash action going on over here anymore. So I'm gonna just change that back to one, and now you can see we have um, yeah, it's back to uh, it's back to that, which is what we want here. We what we're gonna do is kind of just create a little bit of variation. You know, you can see before we've been doing this, we've been just working with a single base color. So we're gonna use this same texture to kind of influence the color. And then we're also going to use it again to influence the roughness. And you can leave the bump if you want, but I'm actually going to get rid of it for this. So I'm just going to press X to delete that. So now we're working with our just our roughness here. So we can we've got a little bit of kind of splotchiness here, and that and that's kind of what I want to do. I want to simulate what you might see with like some fingerprints or something. So let's take a look at this. Um, you know, maybe I want these to be just a little bit closer together. Always a good idea to save. And, um, and let's see what that looks like. That's just going to give us, yeah, some kind of splotchiness there. And uh, again, I don't want that to be so shiny. So let's take this darker value that's kind of doing the shiny part and bring that up a little bit. And then maybe let's pull these apart so that those like kind of interactions aren't quite so defined. And yeah, I think something like that, you know, maybe we can make the whole thing just a little bit shinier. Let's pull the white down one notch. Pull the darker value down a little bit. Yeah, okay. So now we have some variation here in the roughness and let's now add a little bit of variation in the color. So I'm gonna right click to select both of these, holding shift to select them both. I'm gonna press shift D, duplicate those. And now um, I want this to be mapped kind of the same way. So I'm gonna also plug this vector into this top noise texture. And now let's plug this color into the base color there. And so now, these are the same, you know, if we shift control, left click to see that, but I don't want them to be the same. I want a bit, a little bit more variation here. So I'm going to actually make this one scale down a little bit so that the, um, the color variation isn't quite so large. And, you know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll make this one a little bit like a finer texture. And this one will be a little bit of a larger texture. And again, this just give us some variation. So when we plug all that together, we can see we've got some kind of shifting colors across there and also some shifting roughness. Again, this is not totally realistic, but that's not what we do on this channel. We're going for simple, easy results that just look a heck of a lot better than if you didn't do any of these steps at all. This is just really basic stuff so that you guys can understand the principles. Stay tuned, by the way, for the next tutorial because we're going to be going a little bit deeper on these still easy materials that you guys will be able to follow along with, but we're going to get just a little bit more advanced. So this is looking pretty cool, um, but play around with this stuff. You can do really whatever you want. You know, maybe you want this to be 
like kind of a like a rosy color, you know, a champagne color. We we'll pull up that saturation there, make it a little bit red. Um, maybe move that a little more towards the yellow or something like that. Um, and now you can see we're getting, you know, it's a little bit more exciting here. But let's make this, this that same kind of rosy color. So I'm using that eyedropper. We bring the value down. Maybe save again. Take a look at that. Yeah, that's looking nice. So now you can see we've kind of just got this nice little variation there. It's a little bit cloudy. You know, we've kind of got this. Um, it's almost as if the metal was imperfect when it was poured or something like that. But think about the story of your own metal material that you're creating and um, and tell it with procedural textures. That's so lame. <laughs> Anyways, that's about it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. Again, stay tuned for the next one. We're going to be going through some slightly more advanced metals and just kind of showing you, um, you know, how you can take this a step further. But I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.